Welcome to Kaiser Kalmar History. Today, we're going to take a look at another incredibly interesting figure from the First World War. He was a decorated hero, held the rank of sergeant in the U.S. Army, and served in the 102nd Infantry as part of the 26th Yankee Division. But the most amazing part about him was that he wasn't even a human. Animals have been a part of human warfare for thousands of years. And when you think about animals deployed in war, you're most likely thinking of one specifically, horses. This was very much also the case in World War I. So many horses actually lost their lives serving their countries in the Great War that they're dedicated memorials solely to the horses. There's even been an Academy Award-nominated Steven Spielberg film about a horse in World War I. But the subject of today's video was not a horse. He was a dog. And in fact, he's been called the most decorated war dog of World War I, and his name was Sergeant Stubby. Stubby's exact date of birth is unknown, but it was estimated to be sometime during 1916. Nobody truly knows when he was born because he was actually a stray. With no owner to be beholden to, he liked to roam around the Yale University campus where the 1st and 2nd Connecticut National Guard who would later become the 102nd Infantry, were training. The soldiers took kindly to Stubby and made him the unofficial mascot of the division. After the training was complete in October 1917, the division was shipped off to France, and one of the members by the name of James Robert Conroy smuggled Stubby onto the ship with him. After reaching France, Stubby was discovered by Conroy's commanding officer, but it was said that Stubby made such a good first impression on the officer that he allowed him to stay. Stubby first saw action in April of 1918 during a raid on a German-held town. He found himself over the top of the trench where he was wounded in the leg by a grenade. After his recovery, the local women in the town of Chateau made Stubby a makeshift uniform embroidered with the flags of the Allies. By the end of the war, this uniform would become heavily decorated with all the honors he would earn. After returning to action, Stubby performed many duties, such as warning his comrades of impending gas attacks, keeping the men company during the downtime in the trenches, and making trips into no man's land to locate wounded soldiers. Stubby was wounded again by a mustard gas attack, and after returning from his injuries, his unit equipped him with his own custom-made gas mask. But out of all the duties Stubby performed previously, his finest hour was when he single-handedly snuffed out a German spy hiding in the Argonne. He attacked the spy and kept him pinned until his unit could make it into the forest to capture him. After his capture, his unit symbolically awarded Stubby with the Iron Cross, which they took off the captured German uniform and pinned to the rear of his. Stubby served out the rest of the war with his de facto owner, James Conroy, and the rest of the 102nd. And after the armistice, he was smuggled again onto a ship that carried the unit back to the United States. When Stubby returned home, he was praised as a hero and became a celebrity. He led many victory parades around the country, was awarded a lifetime membership to the American Legion, and he met Presidents Woodrow Wilson, Calvin Coolidge, and Warren G. Harding. In 1921, Stubby was awarded a Gold Hero Dog Medal by General John Pershing, who was the Supreme Commander of the American Forces during World War I. Stubby continued to be a post-war icon throughout the rest of his life, and he took other duties as well, such as becoming the Georgetown Hoyas team mascot. Eventually, Stubby passed away peacefully during his sleep in 1926 at the estimated age of 10. He was eulogized by many members of his former unit and even had a half-page long obituary in the New York Times. The following is an excerpt from that obituary. Quote, Stubby is dead. He was only a dog and an unpedigreed at that, but he was the most famous mascot in the AEF. Stubby took part in four major offensives, was wounded and gassed. He captured a German spy and won more medals than any other soldier dog. 
He led the American Legion parades and was known to three presidents. He was, indisputably, a fighting dog. His Arlington is to be the Smithsonian Institute. Unquote. As the excerpt states, Stubby's final resting place is in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., where his taxidermied remains are on display. Stubby still remains an icon of animals who served in the First World War till this very day. As a matter of fact, an animated movie about Stubby was released as recently as 2018, and although overshadowed at the box office by bigger name films, it's apparently very good, holding an 89% on the movie review site Rotten Tomatoes. I'll leave a link to the trailer in the description if you'd like to check it out. In summary, Stubby's story is one that encapsulates heroism, an animal's loyalty to their human companions, and the harsh reality that World War I was not only one of the most destructive events in human history, but had an enormous impact on animals as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. A little bit of news, the channel now has its own Twitter page, so if you're interested, please head over and give me a follow at History Kaiser. Till next time, this has been Kaiser Caliber History.